So we are going to derive two properties of the Laplace transform in this video using some fun techniques by playing around with this integral definition. So let's write down what we have here. The Laplace transform of f in terms of s will be the integral from zero to infinity of f of t times e to the negative st dt. Now, we notice that there's an s inside of this integral which is not being integrated at all. So that might make us think to use Feynman's technique for integration, which says that if we take the derivative with respect to this variable s of our function, that's equal to the integral from zero to infinity of the partial derivative with respect to s of the inside here, f of t e to the negative s t. And remember, the partial derivative just means that we pretend everything that's not s is a constant. So f of t, we can pretend is a constant, and bring that to the outside over here. We take that out. We're just looking at the derivative with respect to s of e to the negative s t. In that case, it'll be e to the negative s t, and then by the chain rule, the derivative of negative s t with respect to s will be negative t. So that's going to be our result here. The derivative with respect to s of f of s is the integral from 0 to infinity of f of t times negative t e to the negative st dt. If we bring this negative to the other side, so we have negative, the derivative with respect to s of f of s, that's equal to the integral from 0 to infinity. We can write this t first times f of t e to the negative st dt. Notice what we have on the right side of the equation looks a lot like the Laplace transform definition that we have up here. This is in fact equal to the Laplace transform of t f of t. So we can write that here as the first identity that we have. The Laplace transform of t f of t equals negative the derivative with respect to s of f of s, where f of s is the Laplace transform of this function f in here. So this is a pretty cool identity we have here for the Laplace transform of t f of t using the derivative. And that might make us think about what would happen if we integrated that instead of taking the derivative. So if we have f of s being equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of f of t e to the negative s t, what if instead of differentiating with respect to s, we integrate with respect to s? Well, if we wanted to do that, we would really want to have a definite integral so that we don't have to worry about any plus c's. We know because we're dealing with e to the negative st, infinity is always a nice choice for the upper bound. And then the lower bound, well, if we choose the lower bound to be a number and we're integrating with respect to s, then we're just going to end up with a constant when we do this integral, which won't help us very much. So we really want s to be our lower bound for this integral. We want the variable of integration to be something different so it's not as confusing that we have an s here. So let's talk about f of u du. So this is the same function as f of s, but we're just calling it a new variable. This is going to equal the integral from s to infinity of the integral from 0 to infinity of f of t times, remember we're talking about u on the inside now, so f of t times e to the negative ut times dt du. Now we just need to figure out what this right side of the equation equals. To do that, we really want to switch the order of integration. So let's take a look at what the range we're integrating over looks like. We can do this even if you don't know very much about vector calculus and double integrals, we can still figure this out. Normally when we're doing an integral, we integrate over a line, over a linear range. But in this case, we're integrating over an area. If we look at t being on the x-axis and u being on the y-axis, notice that t goes from 0 to infinity, and u is going to go from s to infinity. So these two variables are really independent of each other, which means if we look at s being this y value here, the, the range that we're integrating over is just going to be this entire range extending to infinity up in this direction. If we want to flip the order of these integrals, all we really need to do is flip them around. There's nothing else we have to do because it's just a nice, easy rectangle. 
So we can make the outer integral, the integral from 0 to infinity with respect to t, and make the inner integral, the integral from s to infinity with respect to u. And now this is something that we can handle a little easier. The reason that this whole thing is useful is notice what we have on the inside. f of t does not depend on u, which means it's a constant that we can actually bring to the outside like this. And then we're just going to integrate e to the negative ut, which is nice and easy because we're treating t as a constant for now. So this is going to equal the integral from 0 to infinity of, well, if we integrate this, we'll get e to the negative ut again. And then doing a u substitution, we'd have to divide by the derivative of this will be negative t with respect to u. This is evaluated at infinity and s. So let's look at this evaluation. Again, e to the negative infinity is always going to end up being 0, so we can ignore that. And then we have minus a minus is a plus for the lower bound. e to the, well, we plug in s for u. So we get e to the negative st over t, just like that. So we can take out this evaluation sign here. And then the last thing we have is our f of t over here. So if we write what we have on the left side, the integral from s to infinity of f of u du, big F of u, equals the integral from 0 to infinity of f of t over t times e to the negative st dt. And this is where the magic happens, because just like before, notice we have the Laplace transform of f of t over t as our answer on the right side of this equation. So we found another identity that might help us out when we're doing these Laplace transforms, which is that the Laplace transform of f of t divided by t equals the integral from s to infinity of big F of u du. So these are our two Laplace transform identities for multiplying by t and dividing by t that we got by playing around with some integrals and derivatives just like this.